Hey y'all, we just fished New Malone's mid-January in the pouring rain. It was a little wet. A little wet, a little wet. all day. Every single clip minus the very end of it is pouring down rain. Um, so it was fun. We went to Malone's because we got requested by a subscriber in an earlier video. So we made a run out there. Um, again, mid-January. Conditions are constant rain <laughs> all day for six hours. Uh, let's get into it. Um, right off the bat, we started off right by the ramp. We launched at the, whatever the north ramp is on the point. The Glory Hole. Hole. Glory Hole ramp. Glory Hole. Um, you'd think I'd remember that name. Um, but <laughs> We launched there, we fished that main point. There was fish there. Yeah. And there was like some sort of like weed or stuff up there. They were between that and the offshore rock. Yeah. Didn't get bit, but we moved off of that, went across the way to the normal area that I've been to. An area that actually shows in the video that I did about where to fish on New Malone's. Yep. We went to that area. Um, well, we went there because we knew there's always even a little fish, right? Yep. Just to try to get the mood, because we hadn't been at New Malonis in, uh, since almost, May. Almost a year, yeah. yeah. We haven't been there in like nine months, maybe a year. Um, and that's why we went to that area, because it's there's a reason why I talked about it. It's a community hole, and it's a community hole because there's always fish on it somewhere. Yeah. Um, started out the day, and I caught a fish on drop shot on Sorry Steve which is watermelon candy flick shake um, in the 4.8. And then we actually noticed that they were a little more active shallow. Yeah. And they were up a lot shallower than we thought they would be. We expected to fish super deep, uh, like talking like 30 or deeper is yeah. what I was walking into it thinking. That's not the case. Um, at all so uh we basically noticed there was up shallow and then he picked up a jerk bait yeah i picked up a cherry spawn jerk bait the mega bass uh, 110 junior plus one and the water temp was like 54 to 56 degrees i was thinking like we're gonna have to like a slow pop like a pop and pause and pop and pause and and let let the fish come and they're coming up at it but there was no commitment. And then one of the times I was about halfway back and I just started popping it, coming back in and they ran at it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. I know, yeah. I know what's going on. And I threw the jerk bait like normal and I started picking them up on that cherry spawn, throwing it right up to the bank and pulling it out. And I was pulling multiple fish out with it and yeah, they were, bit. they were schooling up. We're not schooling up with it, but you'd see one come up and there'd be multiple with it. Yeah. So started going through that and then um, I, I caught a few fish yeah. doing that. Yeah. And uh, we kept going down the bank, just playing around and and then I, when, I noticed. And the, and the playing around was uh, we picked up crankbait. I did crankbait. Um, we had a rig we threw. Um, we threw a couple different crankbaits, uh, a couple yeah. different variations of a rig in color, and they would follow it or kind of rise a little bit on it and then drop back down, but they wouldn't commit to any of it. Did we throw yeah. anything else? Uh, that might be it. I threw a square bill. Yeah, square bill. I threw a DD. Or underspin. I, oh, I threw an underspin. I forgot about that. Underspin. Yeah. And um, the Norman Little Inn is the one that I, the other one that I was throwing. Yeah. And, and it was almost like they wanted that triggering bite right like they would look at it as it went by like a, the crankbaits and stuff like that the square bills but they weren't uh they weren't gung-ho about it yeah, they, they wanted that like that pause but they still wanted it fast yeah so so anyhow we, we we're going down the bank and they weren't committing they stopped committing on me with the cherry spawn it was getting it was a couple hours into the day so i changed and i went to the pro blue Mega Bass 110 Junior plus one, and uh, immediately I started catching fish again. Yeah, and he was catching a lot more fish than me, but I also was still throwing Sorry Steve, and I was catching them here or there. 
Um, and then all I was doing with that was casting it out, letting it hit the bottom. And then they would either be there or not be there. I think the first fish I was working it a little bit, like working it slow. Yeah. But other than that, it's mostly on the cast. Yeah. And but the bites themselves were mostly coming off of not necessarily the steeper banks, but actually where it got shallower. Yeah. So, or where the banks were more progressive coming out. It wasn't the conventional uh, winter time, hey, look for rock points that are steeper rock points. It was actually like kind of the flats in between the two rock areas is yeah. where most of our bites were coming from. Yeah, I also uh, picked up a uh, morning dawn chartreuse tail, robo worm, uh, four and a half. And I fired one out to about 30 feet because I saw some fish out there because I'm not getting the, the, one, the mega bass down that far. And I threw it out there and I let it go all the way down the bottom and I picked up a decent fish out there way, way out deep too. So they are out deep, but they are shallow. You, you could go have a, a great day. Yeah, they're, they're right still now. active shallow, they, which was, like I said, surprising me. The other color that I was throwing was, it's this keeper worm. I don't remember the exact color, but it's like a white. It's like a salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, chartreuse tail, uh, like a, I, think, I think they call it like blue glimmer or something like yeah. that, but it's mainly white. Um, and again, that was drop shot. Uh, I think all of our fish were, besides his one deeper fish in like 30, all the rest of our fish were probably 20 or less. Yeah. If not five or less or 10 or less. Uh, he was getting them with that jerk bait to come up from 20 foot and hit the jerk bait that's only going down like seven foot. Yeah, that was amazing. So they were willing to come up 13 feet to smoke a jerk bait and dance around with it. They were definitely not, they were definitely willing to be aggressive and not shut down. Correct. And we, uh, we ended up, we fished down main lake for a while and we caught we caught a, a couple limits, I think, going yeah. down Main Lake, easy. And then uh, we decided to go up one of the arms um, back well, in the a, creek. Another spot that I talked about in that other video, yep. another confidence spot. That had tons of bait in 80 yeah. foot of water, like filled the entire ravine of bait in 80 foot of water, but the fish around it weren't playing. Yeah, they, there was definitely fish around it but they were definitely deep with that bait there yeah. down there. But there was a ton of bait. Like at first, James thought it, it was trees down there. And, yeah. And then we realized, we dropped the forward scan and was like, oh. Yeah, when we were driving in, it was an area where trees had been in the past. Yeah. And as I was driving in, I could see on the 2D as I was driving on pad and I thought, oh, well, there's the trees and they're like 80 feet deep. And then when we were coming back out, I slowed down to graph the trees and realized that it wasn't trees, it was bait. It was bait. And a, yeah, and a, a lot, lot of bait. It. Um, we didn't spend much time on the deep, deep ones on those because if you hook them in 80 foot, it's you're, hard on the fish. You're probably going to kill them. Yeah. So we left those alone. I, I've definitely caught fish that deep, and they're more than likely eaten down there, but I, it's not worth it fun fishing. Yeah. So uh, we kind of went up to where it was like 40 foot and played around with that, those fish and didn't get them to go. I didn't spend a lot of time there I think you there, missed though. one up there. I think you got a bite. I do, I, well, I forgot. We went over to a, um, it's like a hump, submerged hump. And I did get a bite off of that on drop shot um, off of Sorry Steve, but I missed it because I was not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the fish at, at Malonis are definitely active. They're definitely firing away. You can go there and have a pretty good time. And we were there and it was, I'm telling you, it was pouring down rain. Yeah. We, we had rain gear, everything on, ready ready to roll, but I still was wet. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it came through. It was raining enough that it came through gear. Um, it was fun though. The other place we went to was up um, just past the bridge. So if you're going up to the bridge, the left-hand side, there's like a main point there. Yeah. We fished that. I think we caught we did catch a couple two or fishing. three off of that. This is like the end of the day. Um, the rain had stopped by then, or at least slowed down. Yeah. I think it did actually completely stop. 
and it was like one, two o'clock ish, and we decided that we had already caught a lot of fish to hang it up and bounce. Um, and picked up a fish right when I reeled up. Yeah, yeah, right at the end. He actually, it was time to go. He had his rod laid down. We're screwing around doing that. And he goes to reels, sitting down in the back seat or in the passenger seat, starts reeling and his line just loads up, catches one more fish. And well, that was it for the day. Yeah, that was on that morning gone. It was yeah. a true dead stick. But New Malonis is a place to be. It's definitely active right now. It's not a bad place to go. So don't be afraid to try it. And don't be afraid to try shallow. Yes. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Is that yeah. pretty much it? Yeah, pretty much. If you have any questions down below in the comments, feel free to ask them. You can always hit me up on Instagram. And until next time, I hope you get them. Bye, buddy.